My name is Kyla and you're watching Disney Channel. Hello to all my returning subscribers and welcome if you are new. Today we have a crazy fun video for you. We are going to be ranking the top 10 Disney slash Pixar animated films. So for those of you who don't know me, Disney has been a major part of my life for as long as I can remember. Like my family was that family that watched every Disney movie as soon as it came out, went to Disney World all the time. I even actually have a Donald Duck tattooed on my arm, which I will insert a clip of right here. So yeah, like Disney is my thing. So we are gonna be ranking these starting at number 10 and getting ourselves all the way to number one. I am so excited to do this. Let's head right on in. So starting off strong at number 10, we have the movie Meet the Robinsons. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated movies in the Disney history, franchise, whatever you'd like to call it. This movie is so good. So the premise of this movie is essentially that Lewis is this 12 year old genius who enters a science fair trying to do this time travel machine so that he can find his birth mother. Essentially during the science fair that he's brought this project to, it goes astray his uh, project and it turns out that this guy named the bowler hat guy has actually stolen his machine. So after he's been discouraged by this, he kind of decides to give up, but then he gets a visit from this guy from the future named Wilbur. And Wilbur takes him on this like crazy ride to kind of go through the future and meet Wilbur's wacky family, which makes Lewis gain the courage to keep moving forward, which if you know Walt Disney is one of his main quotes. So the movie is almost like an homage to Walt Disney. I highly, highly recommend watching it if you've never seen it. This is why it gets in my top 10. Okay, so moving on to number nine. Number nine on my Disney top 10 is actually a newer movie. This movie is the movie Luca. So Luca is actually a movie that's been set in like the Italian Riviera era, or not era, area. <laughs> and essentially, the, Luca is the sea monster who's living below the surface, but he's always seeing these boats passing by up on top of the world, like up on top from the sea. And he's always been super curious about what it is that lies above the water. However, his parents and the rest of the underwater world has warned that if he goes above the water, the people above the water will actually not be very accepting of them. And it is actually shown through the fact that the fishermen always try to hunt these so-called sea monsters that they think are just legends. So he eventually makes his way above surface and he has the time of his life. But the reason he's being able to do this is because he's been turned into a human. When he's turned into a human, he gets himself involved in this crazy scheme with a girl from the village and ends up in this bicycle race. But yeah, once he gets through the bicycle race, something happens where he becomes shown to be a sea monster and people start freaking out and going crazy and all that kind of fun stuff. But eventually, as with most Disney movies, it is resolved and it really shows the theme of community and how we can all get together with everyone and embrace all cultures, all similarities and all differences. And it's super, super, super lighthearted and kind. And I just think it's genuinely one of Pixar's greatest movies in the past couple years. Okay, on to number eight, which is a super, super, super big classic Disney movie in my opinion. That movie is Monsters, Inc. So for me, Monsters, Inc. is just one of the comedic gold movies of Disney. I absolutely love the relationship that Mike and Sully have between each other. And then the little princess Boo is so cute and just really shows like a different side of Disney, I believe. I love that in the movie, they take on a different spin of monsters. Like at the beginning, they're supposed to be super scary, super terrible, all these like aw, like nasty things. But in real life, they're actually just like you and me and they have this like quality about them that actually makes them funny. And I believe that funniness is what allows its message to get across so well. And I believe it's one of the reasons why Monsters Inc. should be on everyone's watch list. So if you haven't seen it, get 
on it, okay? So number seven on my top 10 list of Disney movies is the movie Big Hero 6. First thing I have to say is, oh my gosh, Baymax, Baymax, Baymax. I am in love with Baymax. Like, he and I go way back. No, I'm joking. But um, Baymax is just such a lovable character. It's really hard to find yourself not thinking like, oh, he's so sweet. But the story is more about a journey between two brothers and their like faith and trust in each other. And I think the message is something that isn't necessarily seen all the time but it is fantastic when you dig into it. So I think if you haven't seen Big Hero 6, which is set in Japan, it is definitely worth a watch. And if you have seen it, let me know below. Like, let me know your thoughts on it because I've heard from some people that it's a very divisive movie. Like some people think it's not worth the time, but in my opinion, it certainly is. So if you have an opinion on that movie, please leave it down below. I would love to read through it and hear what you have to say. And coming in hot at number six is Toy Story. And I couldn't just pick one Toy Story, so this is gonna be the Toy Story franchise, okay? So for my experience, Toy Story is just one of those movies that's so classic Disney, where you can actually watch the animation throughout the time get so progressive, which is so awesome. And I believe how they went from more of like a male heroine to like a female heroine by the fourth movie is such a like a cool concept and shows that Disney is really moving forward and making advancements into today's society, which is super exciting. And I believe Toy Story is one of those movies that it doesn't matter if you're two or 102, you can really relate to it and you can really find a way to find the movie enjoyable. So another question for you guys, which one is the best Toy Story? Because in my opinion, I can't pick one. Like, I seriously cannot. So if you have a definite winner, you need to tell me because I need to see if maybe when you guys tell me if I'll be able to agree with you or if that'll be the reason I go, mm -mm, you're wrong. You know what I mean? So which one is it? Is it one, two, three, four? Who knows? You tell me. <laughs> On to number five. So number five was actually my favorite movie growing up as a child. Number five is the movie Mulan. Mulan is not the typical princess. She is someone that is a warrior herself. She actually decides to go and fight in the war, which is something that is very like not typical of Disney princess behavior. And she shows that, hey, gender norms aren't necessarily what people think they are. Anyone can do anything if you have the heart and desire to do so you are able to make change and be who you want to be. I just found it so interesting to see the struggles between like family dynamic and pursuing your own dreams that that movie shows. And I think Mulan is another one of those very underrated movies. And if you have never seen it, I need to tell you about Mushu. Mushu is going to make you laugh. He is great. He's voiced by Eddie Murphy you need to put that on your watch list if you've never seen Mulan. So go ahead, give you a second, write that down. Make sure you see it, okay? Because it is a great Disney movie. And number four on my top 10 Disney movies is going to the movie Tangled. The soundtrack alone in this movie is enough to put it here. Okay, the soundtrack is so fun. It makes you want to get up and dance, especially the song, I Have a Dream. It is so good, it's sung by these crazy people, but the song itself goes hard. If you've seen it, you know you know, great song. But the movie itself is actually very interesting. It's kind of like a loose take on the classic Rapunzel. So her name is actually Rapunzel in the movie, but she finds a way to get away from her evil stepmother, has an awesome journey with Eugene, AKA Flynn Rider, and Flynn Rider is hilarious himself. He's just one of those like very charming princes who you don't really like get to meet or see his deeper side until very later in the movie. But it, like the layers that the characters develop throughout it are fantastic and it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth a watch. <laughs> so another one to add to that watch list. Number three on my list of top 10 Disney movies is the movie Princess and the Frog. This movie is absolutely underrated. Highly, highly, highly recommend seeing this if you have not. 
So this is actually a movie about a girl named Tiana who grows up in more of like a working class family who shows that like with hard work, all dreams can be accomplished. That's what she's believed her whole life. So she's built up this money. She wants to open her own restaurant. She tries to open it, but when she does, she finds out at a rich neighbor's party that that money that she had sent to the realtor is actually gonna be taken away and she's no longer gonna be able to open her restaurant. But as a child, that neighbor's daughter had actually been someone that brought her over to listen to fairy tales. They had learned that if you kiss a print, uh, kiss a frog, that you can find your prince charming and all your dreams will come true. So that night when she's at the party, she actually finds a frog and the frog convinces her to kiss him because he is actually a prince and she thinks that he she is a princess little does she know or little does he know mm -mm, that she is in fact a working class girl and not a princess so they end up both becoming frogs and they go on this wild adventure down the bayou they meet mama Odie who tells them that in order to get back to where they want they need to be able to go on this whole journey they end up finding out that they're actually each other's true loves and that true love is able to save the day and it brings them back and Tiana is able to open her restaurant and everything goes according to plan. It's a super, super awesome movie. I love the like jazz elements of the movie as well. And there's this character, Louis or Louis, who is just so stunning, so fun to look at, like not look at, uh, so fun to like see him interact with the other characters. I love his like energy in the movie. It's just so fun. So yeah, most highly underrated movie I believe on this list is Princess and the Frog. Please, please, please go watch it. I'm coming in real, real hot on number two of the top 10 Disney movies is the movie Hercules. Another one of those soundtracks could put it here too. Like you don't need to even watch the movie if you listen to the soundtrack. It is fire. It is so good. So Hercules is just one of those movies that actually came out a long time ago. And I had never seen it when I was younger. Just honestly, like I didn't know that it was like a big deal. Like no one had talked about it. No one told me anything about it. So I was like, you know what? Like, let me try it one day. And I found out that it is like incredible. There's no other words to describe it. If you've never seen Hercules, just take a second and do so. Like it's incredible. There's nothing more to say about it. Just everyone needs to watch Hercules. Watch it right now, please. Okay. My number one Disney movie, I feel like could be controversial, but my number one Disney movie is actually Frozen 2. Frozen 2, in my opinion, is just something that is so different from most of Disney's previous movies. I believe it's a much more adult film. Like, I think the concepts that are in the movie might actually be hard for, like, a younger child to comprehend. It is, like, because there is, like, an entity that's in the movie that you never really see or hear until at the very end. So it's something that really does do more of, like, a deep dive into, like, the psychological aspects of what makes uh like Anna and Elsa tick and why they have the journey that they have and in my head it's a like creative genius movement I love it and for me Olaf is arguably one of my favorite characters to ever exist he's just so funny like there's a line in the movie where he goes Samantha I don't even know a Samantha and like I still to this day just randomly quote that all the time like it's it's such a good movie so for me Frozen number two gets my number one spot on the top 10 Disney movies. Okay, so that completes my top 10 list of Disney slash Pixar's greatest animated films. So if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel so you can see more of this in both lifestyle videos and Disney videos. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.